we're going to be measuring this um, VNA test board that I made. So we need to calibrate. Let's set up some things here. Let's do uh, frequency. Uh, we'll go up to, um, we'll go all the way to, we'll, we'll do the full sweep. Uh, uh, 300 kilohertz to 1.3 gigahertz. We will um, set it for 801 points. So we'll calibrate over 800. This machine will let you do 1601, but I think 801 is fine. Um, and we will do a cal at the end of this cable. Uh, and we will go to cal. We will make sure that we have the end type. And we will do a one port calibration. So it is asking for an open. That's asking for short. And please don't ask me to repeat this with a nano VNA. It's going to be the same thing. It's just a nano a VNA is small, hard to photograph, and not as fast. <laughs> so, but you'll get similar results. I'm quite impressed with the accuracy of the nano VNAs. All right, so we are calibrated. Um, let's do a reflection. We're in return loss. Um, you, you saw it way down here. That's a really good return loss. Uh, people want to see Smith chart. Let's go to Smith chart. I'll put my load back on so you can see what it's going to look like. And let's do a big picture. There we go. So we get a single little dot there when I have my load on. And when we have an open, we're over here, and there's a little bit of electrical length of the uh, of the cable. And if we put in the cal open, uh, we get a we get a reasonable spot down there. All right. So what we're going to do now is we are going to look at this thing. We're going to look at the one that has a stub and a 51 ohm resistor. So that should look like a 51 ohm load. Okay, and don't worry about that 51 because that's still a very, very good VSWR. All right, so you see that we're right in the, right in the center. Uh, with this, we can actually zoom in. So let's do, uh, let's zoom in on it so we can, which way do I zoom? Do I zoom this way? Yeah, zoom this way. And so there we go. So we are starting out at, uh, let me put a marker on here. Uh, at DC frequencies, we are measuring 51 ohms, 51 point, uh, it's bouncing around, but exactly 51. And uh, we will go out a ways. We are at 688 megahertz, we're at 50 ohms. We have a little bit of capacitance. And then way over here at 1300, we're at 48.5 ohms. So yeah, this thing is, uh, this thing, oops, sorry. Scale one, there we go. So it's doing really well. Um, I'm very happy. So let's do a through measurement, the one that I have, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I can do another one. So I have a transmission line that's long and a 50 ohm load at the end. So let's take a look at that one, see how he does. That will add some electrical length, but it should still be yeah, we're getting a little curly cue there of electrical length. So electrical length on a Smith chart just rotates things. So wherever you are, it's just going to rotate at the longer and longer uh, transmission line you have. You're just going to change the phase. You're not going to change the SWR. You're just going to change the phase. SWR, concentric circles in, on, this, on this chart, and concentric circles, uh, as long as you're traveling, you know, either clockwise or counterclockwise, you're staying exactly the same return loss, exactly the same SWR. So we can zoom in on this and uh, take a look at our little whoop de doo there. Um, so we are starting out at uh, 51 ohms and down at the bottom it's 47 ohms. 
and we're going over here to 42 ohms. So yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's quite a bit worse than the shirt line. So our transmission might not be perfect. So let's go ahead and measure transmission now. We'll go to uh, transmission measurement. All right. And we will need to calibrate our transmission, which we haven't done yet. So let's do that. All right, we will go back to Cal and we will go to, uh, we need to put a, um, a through. We need to connect the uh, input and output together. So we'll do that. And let's make sure. Got these tight with my wrench here. All right, and you see it's, it's already pretty good, but we will do a, uh, a cal through and um, boom, there we go. Now we have a perfect through cal and we will then attach our 50 ohm line that we made ourselves. All right, so let's put that in the circuit. for how we're doing here in transmission. And we're doing perfectly in transmission. Okay, and then let's look at reflection. Uh, and uh, let's see here, we have a bunch of loop de doos because we have um, a lot of electrical length. So we're not really calibrated for this measurement. Um, Play. Yeah, there we go. So we are not properly calibrated for that. All right. We already did this measurement, though, didn't we? We already did this measurement. So um, we're still zoomed way in. Uh, scale one. So what, what, uh, do we want to modify this or not? It seems as though we are a little bit too low. So if we move at DC, we're okay, but at 600 megahertz, we're about 46 ohms. And, um, I think we can probably do better than that. So, um, while we're here, let's measure the, uh, just for fun, let's measure our 100 picofarads in series. I will terminate the other end. So now we have a 100 picofarad in, uh, in series with the 50 ohm load. And we're getting a line that we would expect, right? Uh, we are traveling, along, I don't remember what these lines are called, but we're, we're traveling along a line of constant uh, reactance. So we have constant reactance. Uh, we we here, are here on the 50 ohm curve. So we are on a circle and it's 50 ohms everywhere. And um, we do have a little bit of funniness going on at the high frequencies, but yeah, so we were really good here. We were at 48, 49, 49, 49.9. Yeah, this is just perfect. So it's following this nice curve here. Um, and then up at, uh, it bends over, bends over right at about 244. Interesting. I really don't know what that means. It's perfect, and then, and then it goes funny. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's why I wanted to build this thing. 
All right, so that series one is acting exactly right. And then let's put a, um, a hundred picofarads to ground and see what that looks like. We'll go back to scale. And oh, look, it gives you a perfect, a perfect, perfect circle as well. So remember our circle went this way and that's because we were in series and now the circle goes this way because that's what that, that's now in parallel. We have a hundred picofarads in parallel uh, with the 50 ohms and we get this this perfect circle over here. So it's a great way to learn um, how the Smith chart operates. Now we do have all this stuff up here and that once again is happening right where that break was at the other one. So it looks as though, well, I don't know enough about RF. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a good one to be teaching this. Um, What this looks like to me is that you have a perfect, a perfect capacitance to here, and then you just have uh, electrical length uh, from then on. Um, but I don't know what that really means, but that's exactly why I wanted to build this board. So um, will it tell us um, what value capacitor we have? Now, I think the first one would so we'll go back to the one that has just a capacitor to ground. And uh, I'm sorry, that one is the resistor to ground. <laughs> uh, capacitor to ground. Let's do that one. Capacitor to 50 ohms. And when I am over here, it is measuring uh, 94 picofarads, 96 picofarads, 95 picofarads. So yeah, that's a, a 95 picofarad capacitor. So uh, at least with this value capacitor, it's doing very, very well. So my next experiments will be so if you can use this to measure capacitance, um, especially at, at high frequencies, what is the range of values you can get away with, right? Can I measure five picofarads? Can I measure 10 microfarads? You know, what is the, what is the range? So um, there's probably a video online somewhere that explains all of this, but I'm too lazy to watch. <laughs> So anyway, these are really interesting little boards. Um, I think they're, they'll be really fun to play with and test things out with and everything. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, put these designs, uh, I'll put a link down below where you could order one of these if you want one of these boards. Um, they, they seem to be okay. Um, I do want to measure, it does seem like it's not quite 50 ohms, it seems like it's a little bit low. So I want to measure the thickness of these boards and see if these boards really are um, uh, 32 mils, because if it's thicker, the inductance would go up, and if it's thinner, the inductance would go down, or the reactance would go down. So um, I'm expecting these maybe to be thin. I don't know. We'll, we'll measure them. All right, I'll show off my little micrometer holder that I designed and built once. Um, it's a little uh, sliding ramp here, and uh, holds your Hold your micrometer, so that's a fun little project to do. And it frees up one hand for times like this. Now I've got one of those really old school um, uh, micrometers, not, not a digital one. These are like the pre-digital ones. These have the little lap counter in them. I love these things. Um, I've got one of the fancy Metatoyo, you know, uh, electronic ones, but I, like, I use this one all the time. I like it. So what we will do is we will come and we will measure the 
thickness of this board. And there you go. It is not 32. It is 28. So we can go back to the uh, calculator and put in 28 mils for the thickness of the board and see if we get closer to maybe 45 ohms, something like that. Um, somewhere between 42 and 45 is my guess of what we were seeing on the VNA. Um, and that's probably because this is a little thin. So I think for the rough B boards, I will count on them being this thickness, 28. I will redo the calculations and I will figure out what are the parameters to get 50 ohms with a 28 thick, uh, thick board. And then I'll have those made with gold and uh, see how they turn out.